If you can benefit from a clearer vision or more defined plan for yourself, your business, or your family, keep watching today's show. Hi, I'm Jen Maceda, your host of Woman to Woman Today, where we inspire women to reach their goals by learning from local women who are reaching theirs. Today, we are so fortunate to have Nancy Cantor with us. Nancy is a business coach and the founder of the Dream Factory community. Thanks for being with us, Nancy. I'm excited to be here with you. Tell us about the genesis of the Dream Factory and what it is that you're achieving throughout the Metro West region and beyond. Okay, so the Dream Factory was started in 2004 and it literally came from a dream that I had. And you know, I was already a business development coach. I was doing women in business luncheons. And then one day I had this dream. And in the dream, I was answering the phone saying, the dream factory. So then I had to figure out what it was. And I had just come back from Finhorn, Scotland, which is a very communal and you know, holistic studies place in Scotland. Um, I had just been in the rainforest of Ecuador. And both those places, I was just struck with how when people work together, that being in community is a source of living your dreams. Yeah. It's so essential and so important. So then I just decided it's going to be the Dream Factory community. There you go. And so I changed the curriculum. So instead of doing women in business luncheons, we now had Dream Factory luncheons. Yeah. I redesigned the curriculum. So now we have Chief Dream Officer training. I love that. Yeah, so it's kind of like instead of being a CEO specifically around a business, right. it's really being the CEO of your own life. And that resonates more with women, you think, mm. that you know that that they are constantly dreaming about their goals and and uh, it's almost a dream to have them realized at the same time. <laughs> Well, I think that's really essential because I think sometimes people think of dreaming like you spend a lot of time in the clouds right. hoping something will happen. But I've really put together a curriculum in the Chief Dream Officer training. What we say to be a CDO, a Chief Dream Officer, is you need to be a visionary. So you do need to see something and have a dream. Mm -hmm. But it's really about your gifts and what your vision is for how you're going to contribute those gifts to the world. So then once you have your vision, we say you've got to be an organizer. You need a plan. You need to have goals and actions. You also need to know how you sabotage yourself. Right. Because that's a key thing that even though you have it all put together, what are you going to do that's going to get in the way of actually having your dreams become a reality? Yeah. And, and I know it's not just women in business. And, and that's essentially why, why you changed it. Because you're reaching way more than women that are going to a nine to five job. They're working out of their home, they're entrepreneurs, um, or they're working for their family and, and they still wanna develop these plans to reach whatever goal they've, they've set for themselves. Exactly, I think it's, it doesn't have to be about business. I would say probably 70% of the women in the Dream Factory are, do come to it because they're interested in business. Some people are empty nesters and they're really looking at what's their next expression. Some women have been raising their kids and have had corporate jobs and they want to come back to the work market and they're wondering how do I get supported in doing that. And because the last piece of our curriculum is about creating a community of support. So if you're going to fulfill on your dream, you do need coaches, you do need colleagues, you need people that you're going to serve. And I think there's something about have a community that has your back with a curriculum and we also have accountability circles and we have events. We have a lot of different things that have been designed over the 12 years that we found really works for women because women love to gather. And I personally, I just came back from the Women's March. I think that women gathering is the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. I would agree with that for and all of us, yes. Exactly, and even if you're for, just yep. gathering, yeah. it makes a difference. But if you put some, a few more bells and whistles in terms mm -hmm. of a curriculum, intentionality, accountability, right. publicity for the things that you care about, it just makes the whole thing work. Yeah, really focus for, for a final goal. That, yeah, yeah, that people yeah. actually can fulfill their right. dreams. Right. And also actionable. too, it's a lot about women supporting women. Right. You, you go into a community where people really listen to you. Yeah. And you can share your dreams where it's a safe space and people don't just go, oh, forget that. That's ridiculous, you know? Yeah. But they really listen and they get up underneath you. Yeah. yeah. Really, it's an amazing community and it's just grown um, so much over the time that I've known you and, and beyond. So I'm happy that you're here sharing this. Um, so we're going to be right back. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, I want to talk about those saboteurs. Um, and what people can do, some strategies that maybe our, our viewers can take away. So keep watching. Welcome back.
back. We're speaking with Nancy Cantor, the chief dream officer of the Dream Factory community. <laughs> Nancy, before we left on break, you were talking about that saboteur. Um, tell us a bit of strategies that you share with your Dream Factory community and what's been working for women. So one of the things I do, so we do a training. So during the training, I actually tell a story and I tell the story of Harry Potter. And I feel very fortunate we actually got permission from her publishing arm to use the story because she knew we were using it for good. So I tell the story of Harry Potter and how he lives at Fort Privet Drive, that his aunt and uncle tell him that his parents were killed in a car crash. And you can really tell that they didn't really like him. They had to take him in. And he lives under the stairs in a cupboard. So I tell the story of there he is under the stairs in the cupboard. If anything weird or magical happens, he gets punished it's and thrown fault. under the stairs right. in the cupboard and locks the door. So, and then how Hagrid shows up. Hagrid is the representative of Hogwarts. He shows up and, you know, there have been all these invitations that have been coming and his aunt's been throwing them in the fire. And then Hagrid shows up and he says, Harry, I'm here to get you. And so Harry comes out and he's really confused and Hagrid hands him one of the invitations and he sees his name, Harry Potter, Hogwarts, and he can't believe he's being invited. So Hagrid goes, are you gonna come with me, Harry? So Harry kind of looks around at his aunt, his uncle, his cousin, we're under the stairs in the cupboard and goes, I'm going. And so he goes off to Hogwarts and at Hogwarts he becomes like not only did his parents not get killed in a car crash? They got killed by the Dark Lord, whose name we cannot mention. <laughs> and, they tr and the Dark Lord had tried to kill Harry, and he has a lightning bolt scar that shows that he tried to kill him and couldn't. So he's famous because he defeated the Dark Lord, right. even when as a baby. So the whole story goes, and then he's, you know, his, his gifts are not punished, but they're developed, potions, defense against the dark arts, he has friends, he's the, you know, the seeker on the Quidditch team, like all of a sudden he's big man on campus, mm. famous wizard, being developed and taken care of in an environment that really honors who he is. So you can see that that's a great analogy for somebody who wants to offer their gifts to the world. Like so many times we keep ourselves under the stairs in the cupboard. And that's a question that I ask people. And somehow, because it's built inside of a story and it's analogy, right. people see things that they wouldn't ordinarily of course. see. And so, that's you know, there's lots of things. Example. You know, sometimes it's, you know, not good enough, afraid of right. failure, afraid of success. You know, if I can't do it perfectly, I won't do it at all. You know, so there's a variety of things that come out. And then we say, well, what would Hogwarts look like? Right. So they invent what that imagined oh, future could idea. be. Yeah. And then we say, if you catch yourself, under the stairs in the cupboard, which will happen from time to sure. time, what's the invitation that you will give yourself? I love that. And so they kind of put that all of together. Course. Yeah. You know. So one of the ways that women sabotage themselves is through this negativity, this loop. What are some, what are some other characteristics of successful women? And what is, what is something that most successful women have? No, again, whether they're in business, they're not in business, they're working from the home, whatever it is. I think they have a clear vision. They have a clear vision of where they're going or what's important to them. And I, you know, people always talk about self-confidence. And I don't know that you can build self-confidence per se, but I think when you feel like you have a mission, mm. you have something, you have gifts, yeah. you're here to contribute them, you have a plan, you have a structure in which you can do that, and you continue to do that and develop it over time, I think people just, you just feel good about yourself. And I think also too, we say a lot about, you know, after we do the sabotage piece, we talk about a community of support. Because when you're thinking big, right. you have a bigger dream, it's gonna require you to grow, and you need people around you who are gonna remind you or encourage you when you feel discouraged. So I think that's the other thing, a clear vision. I mean, I would say it goes back to our CDO plan. You need a clear vision, you need a plan. Right. You need to know how you sabotage yourself because if you know it, it's like you have it instead of it having you. Right. You can recognize it. You can and, recognize right. it. And then if you have a community of support and a structure right. and you know a variety of things that we include in the Dream Factory, it will keep you focused and moving forward. A safe place to grow, develop, and really fulfill on the yeah. intentions that you have. That's beautiful. Uh, you have a conference that's coming up. Tell us about that. We do. Okay, so we've been doing this since 2005. This mm -hmm. is our 2017th conference. That's so fantastic. So we're excited about that. Good. And um, it's really, 
you know, what we're doing is we always have a nonprofit partner. So our our nonprofit partner is the PMC this year. Okay. I'm a 19-year PMC writer. So we do a silent auction for cancer research. There's actually a doctor that that we fund and he's going to be there to share about his research. So people from last year will be able to hear mm -hmm. about the donations they made or uh, you know that type of thing to find out what Dr. His name is Dr. Corey Cutler will be what he's done over the year with what he's been supported with. So that's always really exciting. I have another woman, her name is Marcia Tapping, and she has been in the entrepreneurial world for quite a while. But she, uh, she's a cancer survivor. Okay. So it kind of fits our theme. Sure. And she, um, once she got cancer, she ended up selling her business. It was a multi-million dollar business. Mm -hmm. And now she is a motivational speaker that helps people, you know, she, her, her blog is One Life, Don't Waste It. Mm. So on the other side of something Good challenging yep. is that cherish life and move forward. She'll be the keynote. Dr. Cutler Great. will be speaking. We'll have our silent auction. That's Thursday night. On Friday, Marcia Tapping will be leading a workshop. So it'll get people active Perfect. in terms of looking at that for themselves, how yeah. to transcend obstacles and don't let things stop you. And we, she'll be joined by another woman, Marion Robot. And she runs a center in Lexington. It's mm -hmm. the Center for Lifelong Happiness. Oh, I love that. And she's an amazing energy healer and coach. Too. She came from the corporate world. Okay. So she's got a lot of good skills yeah. to help people. She says, shift your energy, shift your vibe so you can create what you truly want. And that's the workshop she'll be leading. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you for leading us for all these years in creating this community of women supporting women. It's really an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show, Nancy. So thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for joining us as well. Um, thank you, Nancy, for sharing her journey with us and always inspiring us. Um, please remember to follow, like, and subscribe to Woman to Woman Today on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube so you don't miss a show. Thanks to the entire team at Access Framingham, especially Shavarsh Morrissey and Francesca Saruti harris Thanks also to Jess Friswell, our assistant producer. I'm Jem Maceda, your host of Woman to Woman Today. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time where we hope to inspire you.